Thought for the day, brothers and sisters. Today I was reading the book of Ephesians, Ephesians chapter 3. 21 verses in this chapter. At the end, in verses 20 and 21 of Ephesians 3, we have what's called a doxology. Doxologies are like prayers that you often hear in Presbyterian churches at the end of service. And this is called a doxology where it speaks basically of the power of God through all generations seen in the church to the glory of Jesus Christ. The glory of Jesus Christ, my brothers and sisters, is seen throughout the Bible. Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ said in John chapter, 9, John chapter 5 verse 39 that we are to search the scriptures for they testify of him. The scriptures are Genesis chapter 1 verse 1 to Revelation chapter 22 verse 21, all of the Bible. We often think that Jesus is only seen in the Gospels on earth, and that's true physically, but all of scripture testifies of the glory of Jesus Christ. In Genesis chapter 3, right in the beginning of time, when Adam and Eve sinned in the Garden of Eden, we're told in Genesis chapter 3 verse 15 that there would be a promise of a seed of the woman coming that would crush the head of Satan and Satan would strike his heel. That is talking of the coming of Christ and his victory on the cross over Satan. In Isaiah chapter 53, we have what's called the suffering servant. It's talking about the coming of one who would suffer for the sins of his people. And this was written about seven, eight hundred years before the coming of Christ. And it talks about the Jesus Christ and his glory here on earth, dying for our sins. So my brothers and sisters, we need to realize that the glory of Jesus Christ is seen throughout time to his people, the church. The church is a Greek word, means ekklesia. It means the called out ones or the set apart ones of God. Sadly, here in America, we often quote the church or we're going to church as a building. That's not what a church is. Church is people, those who have been called out by God. That is where God shows his glory through Jesus Christ, through his people. We, when we live our lives here on this earth, my friends, we are to live for the glory of God through Jesus Christ. We're told in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 31, that whatever we do, Colossians chapter 3, verse 17, Everything that we do is to be the, the glory of God through Jesus Christ. I often remember these verses in my own personal life when I go to work or when I used to go to the gym. Now with the gyms, with all these lockdowns, I try to work out more in my house. Or whether it's with my family, friends, everything I do, I try to say, let it be done to the glory of God through Jesus Christ. That is how we are to live our lives, unto the glory of Christ. It speaks in Ephesians chapter 3, verses 20, 21, about the power of God, how he's working all things out. You know, this has been a rough year, 2020, but life is tough. Psalm 34, verse 19 says that many of the afflictions of the righteous, but God delivers us from them all. Job said in Job 14, chapter 14, verse 1, a man born of a woman is a few years in many troubles. Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ said in John chapter 16, verse 33, In this life you will have trials and tribulations, but be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. The Apostle Paul reminded Timothy in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 12, that if anybody would live a godly life in Christ Jesus, they will suffer persecution. Life is tough. 2020 has been tough too. For me personally, on April 25th this year, a Saturday, I buried my mother with one car because of the coronavirus outbreak. We couldn't even have a funeral. So it was just me, my wife, and my kids. That same day when I came home, I got a phone call that me, my wife, and family were diagnosed with the coronavirus. And you sometimes, when your life goes into a tailspin like this, you're wondering what's going on. But we need to realize, like Ephesians 3, verse 20 and 21 says, that God is all-powerful. Jesus Christ is given all authority, who is God in the flesh. As part of the Great Commission in Matthew chapter 28, verses 18 to 20, Christ said, all authority on heaven and earth has been given to me. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 11 says that Christ is working out all things according to the counsel of his own will. And for those that are in Jesus Christ, Romans chapter 8, verse 28, we know that all things are working out for our good. But sometimes when we're going through difficult situations, we don't see that good. We've had a political unrest in this country. 
I really avoid politics, but personally speaking, I am deeply concerned about the moral future of our country. Some of the things that are being taught about and have been passed lately in the last few years in America, laws that have been passed in this land are abomination in God's eyes. Jeremiah chapter 32, verse 35, when the people were sacrificing children to the god Molech, killing their children, God called it an abomination. January 22nd, 1973, here in America, we legalized the murder of babies. Now we're just progressing more and more, where now we want to kill babies outside the womb, when they're born from a botched abortion. My brothers and sisters, I am deeply concerned about what's going on in our country, but I also realize that God is working everything out. Whoever is in authority in our nation, and there's some uncertainty right now, we need to realize that God is in control. Daniel chapter 2 verse 21 tells us that God raises up kings and he takes down kings. It, it, it doesn't matter who wins, brothers and sisters. Ultimately, God is going to win. Ultimately, God is going to have the victory. In Philippians chapter 2, verses 10 and 11, the scriptures tell us that every knee is going to bow and every tongue is going to confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, whether here on earth or in the judgment to come. When I look at people on this earth and what they're doing, in our flesh we can get angry, but we got to be careful that that's not self-righteous anger. Looking down at others, you remember the parable that Jesus gave of the Pharisee and the tax collector in Luke chapter 18, verses 9 to 14. The Pharisee was like, I do this, I do that, I tithe, I fast, I know the word of God, I dress well, I go to church. I'm not like this person over here, this sinner. And that person didn't go home justified. The tax collector went home justified because he cried out, God have mercy on me, a sinner. So we need to be careful that we do not get self-righteously angry at other people for what's going on. My brothers and sisters, every knee is going to bow. And I actually grieve when I think of unsaved loved ones. When I see what's going on in the landscape of our country here in America, it grieves my heart. Christ grieved over what was going on in his day. Jeremiah is called a weeping prophet. Lot grieved over what was going on in Sodom and Gomorrah. It's okay to grieve. It is okay to be vexed in your spirit what's going on. But remember, brothers and sisters, Jesus Christ is in control. I hope today's devotional, brothers and sisters, will help us all to remember that the glory of Christ is working everything out in history. And be thankful that you're counted as one of his soldiers. Take care. God bless you all.